All right, uh, greetings and uh, welcome to the uh, Waterways exhibit here at the Glass. I'm Kerry Kautzer, and today I'm going to be doing a painting demonstration for those who are here. Uh, as far as myself, some of the things I've uh, done over the years, uh, probably past 10, 15 years, watercolors primarily. Uh, I learned through uh, my great mentor, James Michael. Uh, and we have Bonita Budish here also in our audience, who is a great uh, artist in her own right as far as uh, oil painting. Uh, I worked for the city of Sheboygan as the director of WSES, and I've done uh, video productions for 34 years. And painting uh, has become a uh, little more than a passion. I think any artist that uh, loves to paint uh, feels really strong connection of what they're doing as far as trying to get their emotions onto a canvas or a board or a drawing or a photograph. Uh, there's a lot of things that create great joy for that person or people that are viewing their art. So today I'm going to start out by uh, doing a watercolor of some evergreen trees that are, uh, these are located in Maywood Park. Now if you have any questions those who at home are viewing this, <laughs> you're going to have to just listen up, watch the program. Uh, many times when I go on site, uh, plein air painting, uh, I'll do a sketch. And it's a, a value sketch of the scene. Uh, you want to look for values, shapes, and colors. Now that's what I was taught. And that's what I primarily uh, try, to, try to capture on my watercolor paper here. Uh, we're in a coffee shop, so we have to bear in mind there's noise. So if you have any questions, uh, fire away anytime. Uh, want me to talk about what I use for supplies or anything? Or Okay. I have my handy dandy brushes here. My mom knitted this bag for me many years ago. So it holds all my brushes. And I use everything from a large three inch brush to smaller brushes. Uh, when I'm painting outside, I, I paint very quickly. I'm a, more of a loose painter, not, not into doing details. Uh, so I have large brushes and I, this is a Goliath brush, which I like a lot. I'll probably use that today. The paints I use are watercolors, they come in a tube. Uh, dry watercolors come in a pan or, or these round dots, uh, but I use tube watercolors. Uh, brands are varied from Da Vinci to Windsor Newton. Uh, so that's about it for this. Uh, as far as the paper I use, it's a 140 pound rough, this particular piece of paper. There's, there's several different types of paper, uh, smooth, uh, fine grain, and when I Prior to going out painting or anywhere, if I'm painting indoors, I'll put my paper, this is a half sheet from a full sheet. I'll cut the paper and I'll put it in our bathtub and soak it for 15 minutes. Then I'll staple it to the board. It's, and then it dries and it stretches it really nice and tight. Uh, I've tried to use tape and it doesn't work. I don't know what, what, how you do it, Evie. You still using the stapling? Blocks, okay. Yeah, then you don't have to mess around with this, but. And what kind of board? This is a 
right. Yeah, it's a it's called a homosote board. You can buy sheets of this from Menards. Another commercial there. All right. So I have everything set up. Uh, many times I'll I'll go out and uh, backpack all my gear in a larger backpack. But if I'm traveling somewhere, I'll take a little. This is a small watercolor kit, very small, where you can just do uh, five by sevens. Well, it's, a, it's almost like what Evie was talking about. The uh, it's just a miniature set of what I have here, and it's m far more portable. And that's what that's what's really unique and, and nice about watercolors. It's, it's great for traveling. All right, let's start. Sometimes I'll, I'll get the whole board or paper wet, and it'll be a, a very wet, wet and wet process, and the, the paints will run and blend together very nicely. Many times with watercolor, you're, you're going to be starting light on, light to dark. The first color was uh, cerulean. Now, with many paintings, you can you try to get the illusion of distance, so you you create the working from back to foreground. So I'm just kind of just throwing paint on randomly. That's the way it looks, but I, I kind of know what I'm doing. Or I have an idea of what I want. Two of my two of my favorite colors to work with are uh, cobalt blue and burnt sienna. They usually give a nice nice gray.
You know, painting outdoors, uh, this painting would dry a lot faster because of just the conditions, uh, whereas indoors they, they seem to just lay there on the paper for quite a while. And there's, there's a lot of moisture in the paint and, and the, on the paper itself. You can, if you see this up close, you can notice that the paper's already kind of buckled, which I'm not real thrilled with right now. Yeah. That's why I have this handy dandy dryer. Not because of my hair, but. <laughs> and with watercolors, uh, as they dry, they, they seem to, they will be a lot lighter, so you probably are better off in the first stages to go a little bit darker than you think because it'll, it's always going to dry lighter. not very dry but it's, it's good enough. Okay. How do you do that in the boundary waters? How do you do that in the boundary waters? The uh, battery operated hair dryer. <laughs> now you just put it in the sun. You just put it in the sun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't paint this large. Well I mean on a canoe trip or something but I've tried just about every kind of trick and you find out in a hurry if it works or not. So now I'm just randomly placing uh, what I believe would be the, and perceive in my mind, the, the branches, where did my sketch go? Be the, the branches, or the, the foliage of the evergreens, and just kind of shapes and, uh, I, you know the trees are going to be green or kind of bluish color. Or, or yellow, or there is going to be several different uh, variations of color of of uh, the cool and, and warm colors. Can you share what colors you're using right there? Uh, this is a cobalt, uh, some viridian, and uh, ultramarine violet. It's, it's more or less the, uh, the the purple color, and I'll I'll, I'll mix each one together on, in the palette or, or right on the.
you see? Oh. Some of this uh, ultramarine marine, uh, violet, I, I really like this color because you can, uh, in a winter scene, it, it creates the, the, the shadows in, in the snow. I'm going to put in some yellow ochre. Yeah. One more. So that gives the this side of the painting a little bit of zing. <laughs> Go back into the trees. I just keep working my way in, getting darker and darker. Trying not to lose the uh, background by covering it up. It probably would not be a good idea at this point. A, a really dark darker color would be uh, indigo which I like to use it's a very dark blue any more questions while I'm working Black 
Right. Well. It could be a gray day, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the sun's coming from this way. Try to put the shadows over here. Yeah, this is definitely the, the lighter, lighter area. Put some red in there. I'll drop a little bit of uh, red, alizarin, crimson. Since it's Christmassy, tis the season, right? Now I'm dating the video. Now I'm dating myself, maybe. <laughs> Both. Both. And occasionally I'll step back and, and look at it. And try to understand what I was thinking of when I started. If you want to make it darker of the same color, you just hit it again. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it does not work. If it's too wet, it kind of goes I think as artists, we can do that. Uh, we, we want to make uh, our paintings colorful and, and that sort of attracts people to, to, to look at them longer than just glance at them and walk away. They, they want to kind of study them or uh, give them that wow, that, that feeling that that's something I haven't seen before or, or something that reminds them of, them of something from their younger days. Or, and, and even your gray areas are, you have colorful grays. And that, that, that creates a vibration as well. Right here? Yeah, I find that as interesting as the more colorful areas, too. And, that, and that's the area I'm going to just put some uh, calligraphy as far as trees. Uh, is that in, the, in the winter months, there's, things are usually pretty gray, and uh, the colors are just not there all the time. Uh, more so on, on days where the sun is uh, overca overcast. Yeah. 
Right here? Yeah. And the key to a lot of painting is when to stop and just, uh, I'm getting to that point now where just, okay, enough is enough. Because uh, I'm running out of time here. <laughs> the next performance is coming up. There's a few places where the paint's running. Uh, that's okay. And something that someone brought up, happy little mistakes are always fun. I mean, they're okay to leave. Uh, and I'll do a little bit of... Uh, the timer on the co on video okay I think we're done <laughs> you just put a mat on it and oh, wow. there you go yeah. so thank you for uh, watching my demonstration yeah,